Hey guys, how's it going? So today I want to talk about amaryllis. I'm going to plant up some brand new bulbs that I just picked up at the garden center yesterday. And then I'm up in the front sun porch because I still have 25 amaryllis bulbs from last Christmas season growing in here. See all of these right here? 25 of them. They're looking really good but I'm really late at tackling this project. So for those of us who live in a colder growing zone, we have to treat amaryllis as a house plant. We can't plant them outside in our flower beds because they will freeze and die. Um, they can't get as cold as we get here. Uh, so it is a little bit trickier to keep amaryllis from year to year because there are a couple of steps that you have to follow in order to help them bloom again. So basically the timeline is we're planting amaryllis bulbs around this time of year, ideally a little bit earlier. It takes amaryllis between five and eight weeks to bloom depending on what variety you're planting. So it's likely the bulbs I'm planting today, since it's mid-November, they may not be in bloom for Christmas, and that's okay. I just consider amaryllis a winter flower, and I don't care when they bloom. It's always a bright spot whenever they do decide to bloom. And then once they're done blooming, we cut their bloom stalks off, kind of at the neck of the bulb, but we leave all the leaves, and we just treat them as a house plant, put them in a bright spot, until it's warm enough to put them outside. And that time could be different depending on what climate you live in. For us, that typically means sometime in May. Um, and then we move them out once the danger of frost has passed and I put them in a spot that gets morning sun and protection in the afternoon and let them grow on throughout the summer months. And then you get to a point in the fall where you have to start simulating a dormancy period for these bulbs. And you have to take into account that their dormancy period needs to be between six and eight weeks. So you need to bring them out early enough to where you can get them in that dormancy period, let them sit there, and then once you bring them out, it can take another five to eight weeks for the bulbs to bloom. So for us, that means we are pulling the bulbs back inside into a cool spot, ideally around 55, which means if you have like a basement that stays cooler, that's where mine are gonna go today, that's where they need to live for six to eight weeks. So beginning of September is when we typically do that. And then I pull them out toward the end of October, and then they usually have plenty of time to bloom by Christmas. So you just have to keep that time frame in mind. Other than that, it's pretty easy. And given the fact that it's mid-November, you know that I'm tremendously late at getting this job done, which means I will probably have amaryllis blooming at or a little bit after Valentine's Day, which most of these are in the red and white and pink family, so it kind of works out perfectly. Um, a few of these actually bloomed for me this summer, which was very strange. So I don't even know how it's going to work out. And I find that I have different levels of success depending on the year. So basically what we're gonna do today is really easy. We're just gonna pull all of these amaryllis, leave them in the pots, but we'll pull them out of this location where they get sun and we're gonna put them into the darker basement. I'm gonna leave the leaves attached unless I find some yellowish leaves. Anything that's dried up or yellow, remove those. But the bulb will suck energy from these leaves down into the bulb to help form a new bud uh, to bloom. So it'll almost feel wrong putting these beautiful big strappy green leaves into a dark location, but it's actually best for the bulb and best for the energy of the plant. And once I get these down into the basement, which I'll show you where they're gonna be here in a second, all I'm gonna do is give them a little bit of water and I won't have to water them again through their dormancy period. You just wanna leave them alone after that point. So let's get these all moved. Well, they looked a lot better up in the sun porch than they do down here huddled in the corner of the basement. You can see some of their leaves were just so heavy that they bent over on their way down here. Um, so those will probably yellow pretty quick. I did pull off just a few leaves that had yellowed ends like that, but for the most part, they're looking pretty good. Um, so I'm hopeful about what's gonna happen here in their future. I also gave them all just a little bit of a drink. They were recently watered, so I didn't need to water them very thoroughly. But I did wanna show you this one. I wanna single this one out because this came from one of the wax coverings from last year. I did a video showing you guys, well, I think I did several videos. I showed you the amaryllis bulbs all covered in wax. It's kind of a newish thing um, where you can get them and you don't have to pot them or water them or anything. And then at the end of the season, you can peel the wax off and plant them. And there were no roots at the bottom of this bulb when I planted it. I picked all the wax off. I showed you guys in a video. And I was a little bit skeptical. I didn't know what was gonna happen. And every single one of them that I took out of the wax, they all survived. They've all clearly formed roots. They're all growing. 
which is very exciting. So at this point, we're done for the next six to eight weeks, and I'm only gonna leave these down here for six weeks because they've already been subjected to some probably colder temperatures up in the sun porch than it ever will reach down here. Um, so I'm thinking six weeks will be sufficient, which brings me to the end of December. I'll pull them out. I'll clean all of the leaves because by that time, all of these leaves will be probably yellow, withered up, done. We'll cut them all off at the neck, like the top of the bulb right here, cut them all off and then we'll water them and let them start to grow. All right, let's head back upstairs and get those other bulbs planted. And this is a super simple process. You do not need a lot of different ingredients or supplies to get this done. I mean, you can get extravagant with it and have you know, really fancy containers. You could underplant them with different things if you want to, but we're just gonna go simple today. I brought um, oh, six of these bulbs from the garden center. This is called Minerva. It's a beautiful blend of red and white. All six of them are going in this container and they're gonna sit on our kitchen island as a beautiful striking centerpiece. I think it's gonna be gorgeous. Um, I also forgot that I had this one sitting on our back counter. This is a red lion, beautiful bright Christmas red. Gardener Supply sent this one out to us. Um, I do source my bulbs usually from three different places. I thought I'd go over that really quick. First off, my parents' garden center, I always go down and get a bunch from them. And I like to do that, especially if I know what I want to plant them in because I was able to go down and they have some giant bulbs like this and some even bigger than this. And then they have this size and I thought, you know what, based on the size of bowl, I know that six is gonna fit in here perfectly and then it just makes it easier to gauge. Um, Gardener Supply also, I usually get a lot from them and then Color Blends has a really good selection on their website as well. Um, so we'll link all of them down below, but that's typically where I get all my bulbs from. Okay, so the first thing I need to do is just put a little bit of soil in the bottom of this container. And we really only want enough soil to where it'll come up to just the bottom of these bulbs. We really don't want to pack soil up really very much further up the bulbs. I'll probably do it about not even halfway. The main goal is not to get any dirt up into these cracks, into the crown of the plant, no dirt or water. Um, the only reason why I'm going to put dirt up the sides a little bit is because it does help stabilize the bulb a little bit once they're so top heavy, but you can also use stones for that as well. So we'll put a little layer of soil in the bottom and then I'll show you how they go in. And we're just using regular potting soil for this. Oh my goodness, I should have chosen a sturdier table. Look at this. It's just like wobbling all over the place. So now I'm gonna start placing my bulbs. I'm just gonna create a little bit of a well, and hopefully you can see, I'm trying to see, I'm filming this myself today. Um, see, hopefully you can see what I'm doing. Make sure that the roots hit some soil, and we're just gonna go, we'll just nest it down just a little bit. See what that looks like right there? It's kind of perched up in the soil, but that's perfect. Okay, now I'm going to fit the rest of these in really quick. I'm guessing once all six are in, they're gonna kind of support themselves. They'll be planted fairly tightly. Do I have room for six? <laughs> I don't know, I might have misjudged that. Might only have room for five. I only have room for five, you guys. I misjudged a bit. I didn't take into account the tapered sides of the planter. I was just looking at the top. Something to keep in mind. <laughs> mm, no, I think I can do it. Hold on. Oh, before I get too far into this, I did want to talk about sizes of bulb just really quick, just because I've got two different sizes here. So this one right here indicates on the tag, and you can tell just by, you know, how big it is. It's a 40 to 42 centimeter bulb, which means, I mean, it's just a more mature, bigger bulb. It'll produce more bloom stalks. These are a 34 centimeter bulb, which means um, they typically produce anywhere between two and four bloom stalks, uh, and then usually have three to four blooms per stalk. So imagine how many blooms we're gonna be dealing with here. Um, and then you can get them 24 centimeters, which typically produce one to two bloom stalks. So they'll vary in price depending on size of bulb that you buy and uh, what variety, because there are some more rare varieties out there that are a little bit more expensive. So this is a 40 to 42. We'll probably get four plus bloom stalks from this one, two to four bloom stalks from this. Okay, check that out. Doesn't that look perfect? They all fit in there great. And I actually like that there's a little bit of a gap in the center because once they produce their bloom stalks, 
the blooms will face all directions. So if they were planted with like one in the center, the center one would be completely choked out. So yeah, once you've got that soil packed in around the bulb and they're all kind of firmly in place, we can top dress the soil, which this also helps anchor the bulbs or anchor the plants in place as well. Um, you can use stones for this. You can use moss, which is what I'm using today. Pine cones are always really pretty and I might pop a few pine cones in after I put the moss in. You can also plant things if you want to, keeping in mind that we don't water amaryllis an awful lot. So if you're planning on putting this in a really bright spot, which is typically what amaryllis kind of want, um, you could put like lemon coral sedum, you could do a euphorbia, like a diamond frost if you can get your hands on it. Um, something like that would be really beautiful at the base of these plants. But I've got something, this is called mood moss. It, the brand is super moss. It's not living moss, but it's been dyed and preserved this color. So it maintains for a really long time and it's really beautiful. I hope I have enough for this project, but I'm just going to tuck it in around the bulbs real quick. Oh, look at that beautiful piece of moss. I love it. I would love it even more if it makes the distance around all of these bulbs. Oh my gosh, we barely made it. So there's the finished product right there. I'll give you a closer up look here in a minute. But all I need to do at this point is just go set it inside, water it one time, just to kind of settle everything in, and then I'm not gonna water it again until I see some growth start to happen, um, which hopefully happens really quickly. I know I'm a little bit late, um, but it'll be exciting to watch these grow. And also the one other benefit of having some space kind of in the middle here is if these get really top heavy, I can put a really beautiful branch, even one that's kind of like branched out, right down in the center, and then I can lash all of my bloom stalks to that branch as kind of a staking system to keep everything upright, which sometimes we have to do that. So anyway, that is it for today's project. I hope it was helpful just to see kind of the whole process of what I go through with these amaryllis. Um, I'll, I will report back on the amaryllis that are downstairs. And I kept saying earlier on in the season, we're gonna do a video when I get ready to move the amaryllis down and do their dormancy period. And this year has just been really weird. and. My schedule is very off for a lot of different gardening projects, so thank you for bearing with me. Um, we'll still hopefully get some beautiful blooms out of them, and I know we'll get beautiful blooms out of these. So anyway, thank you guys so much for watching, and we will see you in the next video. Bye. Oh, I'm gonna give you a close-up of this. Hold on. So there you have it. Beautiful moss top dress. It's just kind of hiding the uh, bulk of the bulb right there. The soil starts way down in there. Um, I just think it's going to be really beautiful because in the end, I mean, we'll have some super tall bloom stalks coming out of this container. There's also one other thing I wanted to show you that Gardener Supply sent out. So I'm not really sure how I feel about these yet. I think I'm going to have to try them out this year and see, but see this like little hanging cage system? Well, you've got your waxed amaryllis bulb that doesn't need any care or anything or any water. It's already got everything it needs. You put it upside down in this little holder and hang it and then the bloom stalk and the bloom grow upside down. We'll try to see if we can get an image so we can show you kind of what we can expect these to look like. But there's a green one, a red one, and a white one. I'll include pictures later on. I just think it's interesting and different. Not sure about it. We'll see. And just in case you were wondering, yes, I have been doing this project in both my bare feet and my slippers today. Because <laughs> it's Sunday and I didn't have to go outside. Comfort is important.